Thanks for tuning in. My name is Brian Suk, coming to you from Central Park in New York City. And on behalf of everyone here at SETA, wanted to wish you a happy Earth Day. We wanted to talk about some trends that we're seeing in sustainability and technologies with specific regards to the cloud. And so we wanted to take this Earth Day to try to spread that message and try to get you thinking about different ways to think about sustainability and the environment in the context of technology. So one of the topics that we wanted to talk about is with regards to AI and ML, because that seems to be all the rage right now. With things like Google's BARD and ChatGPT, everyone in the technology world seems to be talking about it. So how can we leverage some of the artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities that technology brings in the realm of sustainability? So one example that we are noticing is, this, is the uh, trend in using this in environmental observation. So when we think about the sound of birds, uh, the types of chirps that they make, uh, whether you think about the types of sounds that animals make, we're starting to see AI models being embedded in the edge right in nature. So we can start to get a better understanding of what animals are where. So we can do things like count them, we can notice migratory patterns, and we can start to do advanced analytics on the patterns of animal behavior. Another example that we have is around energy optimization. So this is something that Google Cloud has been doing for a long time, where they actually took the power outputs and the readings of the data centers and applied machine learning capabilities on top of the trends in that, in that data in order to optimize the power usage in their data centers in order to make it as clean as possible. Another example that we're seeing as well is in the, in the realm of uh, predictive, uh, predictive analytics in weather patterns. So if we're trying to locate areas of high risk or we're trying to, uh, we're trying to anticipate where the next natural disaster might occur, especially in this day and age where the climate is changing and these kinds of events are more frequently occurring, it's all the more important to be able to better predict where these things are going to happen and where it's going to happen as well so that we can, we can coordinate first responders and we can reroute logistics appropriately. And also that does bring us to the topic of data, the topic that's near and dear to my heart. So data is really at the crux of everything because when you want to try to address a problem, I think that step one that's very important is to understand what that problem is. And so data is a crucial piece that allows us to measure and observe the situations that we're trying to solve. So I know in previous episodes of the Technical Empowerment Series, we've talked to different organizations that are specializing in these areas. So Topolytics, uh, where we had our guest Michael Groves, he was uh, leading an organization that's a very good example of this, where in the UK and in Europe, they're trying to map out waste cycles in order to better optimize where recyclables go and where, where the garbage is going, essentially. And so that's one example of leveraging data in order to address some problems in the environmental issue space. And another example with the previous guest that we had was with a company called Audet. And Audet deals with creating data sets for commercial real estate that tries to map out the carbon footprint and the energy efficiency and other different building attributes of commercial real estate so that property owners and property companies can better optimize things like power, how do they uh, how do they route things within the building and try to make things more efficient and thus lower the carbon footprint. So again, it's this idea of being able to monitor and quantify how things are operating in order to make them more efficient and to make them more green. In addition to the broader technology ecosystem, we also have Google itself. So Google, for example, has the Environmental Insights Explorer, which is a data set and a data explorer tool that lets you look at different areas in our, in our planet and start to see things like the air quality index about how likely it is to catch on fire and different attributes of different geographies so that you can start to get more insight into the land that we all share. There's also uh, things like Earth Engine, which is a really, really good way to look at remote sensing information and, uh, and remote satellite information. So to be able to get insights from raster data that we previously couldn't just because of the sheer scale and the technical difficulty of it. So these are examples of how we can take data that we previously couldn't really analyze all that well. And now we have the tools and platforms in order to be able to crunch through that pretty easily. And again, this is all in the broader effort of taking that first step and understanding what the problem space is so that we can address it more appropriately. 
and this really brings us to uh, this really brings us to what each and every one of us can do, especially in the technology field. So the first thing that I would implore everyone to do is look at the carbon footprint of your cloud deployment. So all three vendors, uh, all three cloud vendors, if you look at Microsoft Azure, if you look at AWS, but more importantly, if you look at Google Cloud, which has the market leading tools in this space, all offer insights into the carbon emissions and the carbon footprint of your particular cloud deployment. In SADA's previous ground school sessions, as well as on technical empowerment series videos here with Google, we have partnered with them to try to bring uh, more insight into how you can leverage Google's tools in order to get better visibility into your particular cloud deployment's carbon footprint. This lets you understand what the baseline is for, for the total impact that your application or your data set has on the world, and that will let you look at your architecture and better optimize in order to lower your carbon footprint while maintaining your application SLAs. This is something that we are starting to refer to as green ops or green operations, and we expect to see this topic come up more often in the future across our customers. Second is also if you're in the space itself and your, your company is actually addressing issues within sustainability or environmental issues, look at the different data sets that are available to you in things like uh, in things like the broader technology vendor space or even Google's own data sets so that you can leverage these tools and these data sets to get better information to make more actionable insights. Also, be sure to look at the different applications that cloud really does let you uh, let you implement because the, the possibilities truly are limitless when you look at the different broader technologies, both in application development, as well as data and analytics, that you can specifically tailor unique solutions to address all aspects of the environmental crisis. And with that, we just wanted to, we just want to give you a quick update on some of the trends that we're seeing. And be sure to look in the description of this video for links to previous sessions that we referenced, as well as to other materials that may help you on your sustainability journey in the cloud. Take care. Thanks again for the time and happy Earth Day to everyone.